Hi everyone, my name is Christopher van der Maade and welcome to this lightning speed demo um, where I'll be showing an automated SecOps workflow with policy enforcement verification. I'll be using quite a few solutions, but there's definitely room for more. My name is Christopher van der Maade and I'm a developer advocate focusing on security with Cisco's uh, DevRel organization. The workflow today is about what happens next if suspicious behavior is detected. So what we can see at number one is that a suspicious malware behavior is detected. For example, secure endpoint could detect something, could also be another solution. Step two should then always be enrichment. Find out as much information as you can about this incident. Then if, if you're certain that something is wrong, you go over to the response phase, where in the case today, we'll be blocking a command and control domain uh, using Cisco Umbrella. We'll then be verifying using Cisco Thousand Eyes uh, whether uh, that domain is indeed not reachable anymore. So to verify the policy, we will also create a secure X casebook. Uh, we will disable the user in Duo. And uh, finally, we will send all the information via WebEx uh, messages so that uh, the security operations center and instant response workers uh, can um, yeah, review it. So where do we actually run all of this code? Now, what about if I tell you there's no code or at least low code, as you can see? So what we're gonna use today is SecureX orchestration, which is basically the perfect middleware to run your automations. It's a cloud native microservices architecture, and it's highly performant and scalable and built into SecureX so everyone can use it that has at least one Cisco security product. Uh, and it works with drag and drop. So as you can see here, I have a workflow. I'm not gonna go through the details here, uh, but I'll share the link uh, with you that you can import this yourself and work with it. But as you can see, I'm uh, taking a lot of actions, um, doing some uh, checking just of it as if it were code. Now we have our WebEx room here. Nothing is happening. Uh, this is our security operation room. And um, yeah, let's go and trigger this. Um, before we do that, I want to show you we have a user called Jan de Vries classic Dutch name in our umbrella portal. We have the same user in uh, Thousand Eyes and also in Duo. And as you can see, it is active. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to simulate as if there was an attack. So normally this, this workflow obviously would be triggered by an event. Um, but right now we're gonna give it a domain, uh, internetbackguys.com and we'll uh, go and give it Jan de Vries 1 as username. And we'll go and run this. So as you can see, uh, the policy this time is not enforced. Um, so obviously I'm, I made an adjustment in my uh, lab so that uh, even though we're blocking it, my endpoint is, is not uh, secured by Umbrella. So this would be dangerous in the case that uh, you're trying to block a command and control callback and somehow, um, yeah, it's not being blocked. So what happened now is the user Jan de Vries is blocked by Duo. So we can actually copy this link and go directly to the case in Casebook and investigate it. So you can do whatever you need to do to, make, to remediate this threat. We'll also have uh, the case in Casebook here. As you can see, Jan de Vries is blocked in um, Duo you see now that this user is disabled. So that concludes uh, my demo. Uh, some key takeaways is uh, that automated enrichment and remediation can be very powerful. Um, you will have less incidents and tickets if you do that uh, automated enrichment first. Now you have more focus on important incidents and a faster time to remediation. I hope this was helpful and uh, please do try it out yourself. Um, thank you. Bye.